Are you a developer thinking of deploying your application on a serverless platform? This video is for you. We are talking about some of the considerations every developer should take into account when they are picking the right serverless platform for their needs. I am Krish Subramanian, founder and chief research advisor at Rishirat Research. This is Serverless Fridays for you. <laughs> There are many serverless platforms in the market. Not all serverless platforms are created equal. As a developer, thinking about deploying your application on one of these serverless platforms, you need to take into account some of the considerations before you deploy your application on any platform. In this video, we are going to talk about some of the considerations you need to take into account before uh, you deploy the applications. In fact, you, are, uh, the, you need to take into account many more considerations based on the needs of your applications. We are not going into details. We will give you a link at the end of the video to talk about uh, all the considerations you need to take into account. But now we are going to highlight some major considerations you should take into account uh, before you pick a platform for deploying your application. The first and foremost is the support for programming languages. Does the platform support all the programming languages that is needed by your application? Your application might, uh, might be uh, using certain uh, programming language based on your expertise or the needs of your organization. And uh, the, 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 uh, the serverless platform should support that programming language in order for you to deploy your applications. No, not all serverless platforms support all, serverless, uh, all programming languages. Some uh, has, uh, offer a limited set of choices, especially they su uh, support most of the popular programming languages. But in some cases, you may need to use a specific version of the programming language, or you may ne uh, need to use a programming language that is not supported out of the box. How do you do that? Some serverless platforms provide you that uh, comfort, flexibility. They allow you to upload the pro programming language runtime uh, run as a Docker container and then deploy your application code on top of it. When you are evaluating your, uh, all the uh, serverless platforms for your, uh, for your application, check if the platform supports the programming language you need and uh, you will be able to use the version of the programming language you need. That is the first criteria you need to look before you evaluate other criteria in picking the serverless platform. The second important criteria is environmental variables. The application code should only include business logic. If you're going to hard code the details about your application runtime environment, then you are losing the flexibility with the application deployment. In order to ensure that you have that flexibility with, uh, with the deploying your application, you need to separate out all the necessary details of the application runtime environment. Many serverless platforms offer support for environmental variables, which will allow you to sort of like de 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 define the environment needed for your application and then seamlessly deploy your application that has only the code needed for the business logic. Check if the serverless platform you are considering natively supports environmental variables. Most of the serverless platforms are uh, platforms for event-driven applications. Functions as a service, the term used for the, the specific type of serverless platform, which is used to run uh, deploy various function, is triggered by an event. So uh, event sources are those objects which define the trigger needed to ex uh, execute that function. Most serverless platforms offered by cloud providers provides out-of-the-box support for event sources for various services uh, offered by them. Like for example, object storage or database service. Uh, they will have event sources to use them as uh, triggers to deploy your function. But in some cases, you may need to integrate with third-party services. 
There are some other platforms that offer native integration with third party services. But in some cases, you may need to do custom integration with third party services. One way to do is by using webhooks. But that includes running an API server and uh, handling all the scaling needs based on the traffic that is coming in. That adds a lot of operational overhead and you, uh, it may be, it defeats the very purpose of using serverless platform. So in order to overcome that, so some serverless platforms like for example, AWS Lambda offers something called Event Bridge. With that, you can uh, integrate uh, with the, any third party service and use that as a event trigger so that the function is executed based on the trigger. So check if the necessary event sources are supported by the platform. If not, check if they offer an easy way to integrate any service that you need for your functions to be executed as the event source. Another important thing is data stores. Your application will be using object storage or a relational database or a key value store. Check if the platform offers support for these data sources out of the box. Some platforms allow you to put together backend services that are needed and uh, by, by using their console, but that adds a DevOps overhead on top of developers. So check if the platform offers out of the box support for the data stores you need. If you have to put together a, a, an outside source as the data store, check what are the, the, the what is the DevOps overhead that comes with it. Based on that, make a decision on picking the right platform. In fact, there are some platforms like uh, uh, Zoho Catalyst, um, Nimbella, and even some of the platforms from hyperscale providers offer out of the box support for some of the uh, data stores. But uh, if you need anything beyond that, you may need to uh, incur some DevOps overhead to put together these data, data stores. A follow-up to that is the in, uh, integration with the various cloud services. Your application may depend on different cloud services offered by the cloud provider where the serverless platform is hosted. For example, um, uh, an application can be a mixture of a microservices architecture along with the event-driven architecture. In such a case, your microservices will be running on a Kubernetes cluster running on, let's say, EKS or Forgate on Amazon, and your uh, serverless functions will be running on AWS Lambda. How do you bring them together in a seamless way and encapsulate within the VPC to ensure that the security of your uh, application is taken care of? There should be easy touch points, which will allow you to uh, use various cloud services offered by these hyperscale providers. Check if the platform supports out of the box support for uh, the services your application needs. Another important factor is the browser-based IDE support. This is not a critical requirement, but it's a good to have kind of a requirement. Uh, most of the serverless platform give some sort of an uh, integration with the IDE, desktop IDE developers use, but some developers prefer to use browser as an IDE. Che if you are one such developer, check if the serverless platform offers a browser-based IDE so that you can easily deploy your applications without having to uh, get uh, use a desktop ID. The most critical factor in picking a uh, serverless platform is the documentation. I've seen documentation of many cloud platforms. Some are horrible. With that documentation, you just cannot use and get started with, with that platform. So check if the serverless platform you're planning to use has good documentation whether it will make it easy for you to deploy your application, manage the application and scale it and uh, in ensure that it also supports monitoring and logging support. So you need to, the first step is to have a good documentation. Only if you can deploy the application, you can look into other criteria that are needed for the applications. Do check if the cloud provider gives you documentation with example and uh, if there are some integration points check if there is enough documentation for integrating with those services. These are some of the criteria you need to look at while evaluating the uh, serverless platforms that are in the market. Some of the serverless platform that are widely used by developers are AWS Lambda, Azure Function, 
Google Functions, Catalyst by Zoho, Nimbella. AWS Lambda, Azure Functions and Google Functions are serverless offerings offered by the hyperscale providers, the top three hyperscale providers. In fact, Google also offers something called Google Cloud Run, which is a way to a serverless way of deploying containers in cloud. Catalyst is targeted as specific business users uh, who are using uh, Zoho services and it helps them to put together an application or even a website in a seamless way. Nimbella is a multi-cloud platform that can be deployed on any cloud provider or on-premises. It's uh, suitable for organizations having their applications in multiple cloud providers. So uh, using Nimbella platform, the organization can provide a standardized developer interface for their developers. There are other cloud platforms out there. In fact, uh, there are open source projects like uh, Knative, uh, OpenWisk, and OpenFast, which work seamlessly on top of Kubernetes. Uh, platform as service offerings like um, Red Hat OpenShift and VMware Tanzu offer a serverless layer for developers to uh, have that serverless experience. So ch check out all these platforms, evaluate using the criteria we described in the video, whether these platforms uh, fit your needs and pick the right platform that is needed for your application. If you have any questions, post your questions on the comment. And we have put together a evaluation framework which you can use to full, fully evaluate in deep whether a particular platform can fit your application needs. If you go to this GitHub link, we have the uh, details about what are the various factors you need to take into account before you pick a, a functions as a service platform for your application. If you like this uh, video, and if you want to know about other videos that will come in the future, hit that subscribe button and hit that uh, bell icon next to it. You will get notified whenever we publish a new video. And uh, we intend to publish a serverless Friday video every Friday talking about some aspect of serverless that will help developers, decision makers, and even IT operations. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the videos we are publishing. Thank you very much.